Hello and welcome. Today I'm reviewing and demoing six mascaras for mature lashes for an everyday look. I chose three in the budget category and three in the mid-range category. The one I'm wearing right now is the one that I picked for budget. As we go through the video, I'm curious to see if you can figure out which one I chose. I'm going to be assessing them for their ease of application using the applicator only. I really wanted to assess whether these mascaras could just be a one and done, just put them on in the morning, no fussing around and go out the door. The other thing I'm looking at is their layering ability. Can they layer up really well so that I get just sort of an even coverage over the whole lash line? I'm also looking for just that daytime look. Nothing too glamorous, but nothing too sparse. I've assessed their ability to wear throughout the day and the fallout. Did they give me raccoon eyes by the end of the day and lots of flakes underneath from fallout? The Benefits Their Real Tinted Primer has been my go-to mascara for the last eight years. A girlfriend recommended it and I haven't looked back. It's my number one grab and go mascara. Though this is packaged as a tinted primer, Benefits recommends wearing this for a natural feathery look, which is how I typically wear it. The one drawback is it only comes in the color mink brown. So if you're partial to black or brown black mascara, this might not suit you. It layers beautifully. The wand is really unique because it has these little bristles on the end where you can separate out any clumps and get them on the tiniest little lash. It layers really well. It just gives that everyday elevated look. At the end of the day, the Benefits Mascara doesn't give much fallout, maybe a few little tiny flakes if you look really closely. I never get raccoon eyes with it. You can see why this has been my go-to mascara for years. The Tower 28 Lengthening and Curling Mascara was my best of 2022 mascara picks. The bristle head is really unique. It has three distinct bristles and I'll throw a blow up of it because I've never really seen a wand that does this, but it really separates each lash. It lengthens, it curls. Like I said, it's been my favorite of 2022. It glides on really easily. It's easily buildable. It gives a little bit more of a dramatic look than the benefits, but it's really pretty. It's really easy to put on. The wear and fallout at the end of the day is minimal. I would say it's a little bit more than the benefits. They're real primer but it still isn't a significant amount of fallout. Prime Lash Mascara is new to me this year. This was gifted to me in PR. They gave me the brown, the black, and the blue. I've been using the blue one and having so much fun. It's giving me my 1980s, early 20 vibes. I gave the brown one to my mother to try because this is a semi-tubing mascara. It was designed by women for mature women with sparse lashes supposed to grab every single little lash and give you that beautiful sort of everyday look. I love the wand. It's just a very basic tapered wand. One issue is that because it is a semi-tubing mascara, you have to work very quickly with this one. You can't really layer it. If Once it's dried, that's kind of done because if you go back and try to add to it, it just ends up pulling the previous application off. So application is a little tricky and you really can't layer with it. It does separate your lashes, but sometimes that tapered end isn't quite able to get every little lash separated. It, overall, everyday look, it's a little bit heavy for my average everyday look, but it still looks really nice. The wear test is pretty similar to the other two mascaras. Not a lot of fallout, not a lot of flaking, but I do have to say washing this off is really tricky. And that's where my mom decided that she didn't want to continue using this because when you wash it off, it separates and really gets everywhere. It clumps all over your eye. It really takes a lot of effort to get this mascara off compared to the rest of the mascaras that I tried. Because this mascara breaks up into these small particles when you cleanse, even with a balm or an oil cleanser, it just takes too much effort and too much friction, sometimes up to three to four cleanses to get all these little particles removed, which is just too much irritation for the under eye area. This is the last of the three in the mid-range. The Tower 28 is $20. The Benefits Their Real Tinted Primer is $28. And the Prime Lash is $28. So let's move on to my budget picks. The Essence Lash Princess has been recommended to me, I can't tell you how many times over the last year and a half, and I finally picked it up. This is a really nice 
mascara wand. It's tapered, it's fluffy, it covers each lash really easily in the first application. But I do have to say the first application is more than enough for me. Two applications make this look too heavy and a little bit too spidery for my daytime look. A little bit more fallout than I would have hoped for, but it's still a very nice application. Layering ability is a little tricky. It's a nice daytime look if you prefer a little bit heavier of an application. Maybelline's Lash Sensational is a cult classic. I used to wear it all the time. I was curious to try it again. I hadn't worn it in forever, and I really wanted to put it against the other two budget mascaras that I tried out. This is the full fan effect, and one reason it's so nice is it has that nice curved brush. However, on retrying it, I found that it actually applied too much mascara for my personal taste for a daytime look. I found it difficult to separate the lashes without grabbing a spoolie. It did clump a little bit more than I had remembered. I definitely think in the past that I'm sure I have used a spoolie with this to get the nice daytime look that I prefer. The fallout is about average, a little bit of flaking. The raccoon eyes aren't too bad. But overall, this is a nice mascara, but I don't think it's going to be a repurchase for me. The Maybelline Falsies Surreal is my new discovery this past month. I was in Target about three weeks ago and the ad caught my attention. The brush looked amazing. Now it doesn't look like that when you pull it out of the tube. I'll put a picture of the brush advertisement here, but it is a wonderfully puffy, bristly brush. And I have to say the ease of application is amazing. It's creamy, it goes on so easily, it just glides right on. You can layer it up without it clumping up. I was able to get each of my tiny little lashes. It gives a beautiful overall everyday look. It's just my style for every day. The wear and fallout wasn't too bad at all, just a little bit of fallout. The only issue that I have with this mascara is the label is kind of already peeling off. Even for a drugstore mascara, after three weeks, the label shouldn't be starting to fall off already. So that's kind of a minor thing, but the application is beautiful. It is, if you guessed, the one that I'm wearing today. I love this mascara. I'm going to be buying another tube. The question is, how long will it last? Compared to their real, this lasts for months. It doesn't dry out. And I've noticed that most drugstore mascaras dry out really quickly. So in the end, am I buying two of these for one of these? Hard to know. The price of these mascaras can vary slightly. Currently at my local Target, the Essence Lash Princess is $4.99. The Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect is $8.99. And the Falsies Surreal is $9.99. My top pick for drugstore mascaras is definitely the Falsies Surreal by Maybelline. And I have to say that my top pick for the mid-range is still gonna be my favorite Tower 28 pick from 2022. I'd love to know what your favorite everyday mascara is. Leave it in the comments down below. I love trying your recommendations. Thanks for watching and wishing you all a fantastic day.